All right, so now we are in chapter seven. And in chapter seven, we're gonna be solving exponential and logarithmic equations as the first part. The second part, we're actually gonna be examining triangles again and certain properties of triangles like the law of sines and the law of cosines. But before we get into that, we're gonna to have to do some review. And so we're going to review the different properties of exponents. And so we're going to take a look at the different properties of exponents, including multiplying, dividing, taking a power over power, and negative exponents. So these are going to be the four major properties that we're going to use. Now there are a few more in other areas, but we're not really going to need to focus on those. These are going to be the main, the main properties that we're going to see. And we're, when we get into the properties of logarithms, we're going to see how these properties are going to coincide with those different properties there. They are gold. We should write this down in our notes and we should make flashcards out of these. These are things or these are properties that we need to have memorized. Hopefully they're already memorized, but we need to have them memorized. So let's look at the first one. Y is a to the x times a to the y. Why is it that we just add the exponents? So we're gonna visualize this. Well, this says that we have three x's and we're multiplying it with four more x's. Well, we have seven of these x's, and so seven of these x's become x to the seventh. So the shortcut is that if I take the three and I add it to the four, that's going to give me seven. And we can actually do this mental process to every single exponent. So get another one here. Well, the first I have the twos, so I have two times negative two, then I have my y's, and so it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And then I have my x's, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Right? I have 3 and, three and 4, and then with the y's I have 5 and 7. And so we add them together. Well, 2 and negative 2 give me negative 4. I said I had 12 y's, so y to the 12. And adding these together, I have 7. So that's x to the 7 exponent, or x to the 7 power. Now let's look at why is it that when we divide exponents, why is it that we subtract numerator minus denominator? So let's write these out. Well, this is the same as I have 5 on top, and here I have 3 on the bottom. Well, any factor that's the same in the numerator and the denominator, they reduce. So that's going to reduce, that's going to reduce, and that's going to reduce. So I only have 2 left, which is the same as x squared. Well, the shortcut, 5 minus 3, is the same as 2, and so that's why we can subtract to do that and we can organize it however I want. So on top here, I can have two y, y, x, 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 x. Okay, so there's six of them. On the bottom here, I still have an eight. So I could even just right now look at that and be like, okay, what's a factor that reduces? Well, a factor of two. So that means it leaves me with a four on the bottom. But then I have five more y's, one, two, three, four, five, and I have five x's, one, two, three, four, five. Now I can start reducing in. So that cancels, that cancels. Okay, no more y's. Reduce, 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 reduce. And so on top, I just have an x. On the bottom, I have that four, and it looks like I have three y's. So y to the third. Now, if we look at it and we do the subtraction part, well, this makes sense, right? That's why I have that four on the bottom. This makes sense. That's why I still have an X on top because six minus five, that's one, right? Because that's X to the first power. But probably where a question might arise is, okay, well, if I do two minus five, I get Y to the negative three. Why is it that I have a Y to the third now on the bottom? We will address that and talk about that shortly. But I just want to sh remind you, and this is a property, whenever we move 
an exponent over a divisor, it goes from negative to positive, positive to negative. But we're going to talk about that uh, property more formally shortly. Now we have a power over power. So when we have this exponent taken to another power, why is it that we multiply them together? That's what it's saying here. We take them, the shortcut is that we multiply them. Well, this is saying I have four of these. So one, two, three, four. It says I have four of them. Well, we just learned that when we're multiplying, we add them. So three plus three plus three plus three, which ends up being 12. Well, three times four is the same as 12. And so that is the reason why we multiply them. So let's look at another one. This is saying I have three of these. So 2x cubed y squared, that's 1. 2x cubed y squared, that's 2. And 2x cubed y squared, that's 3. It says I have three of them. Well, 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. Adding those, that's x to the ninth. Adding those, I get 2 plus 2 plus 2 is 6. So y to the 6. Well, this is the same as 2 to the third, which is 8. x to the third to the third. So 3 times 3, that's where I get the 9. And then 2 and 3, that's where I get the 6. So that right there is going to be my answer. This is the reason why, though, we have to be very careful. If I said I have x plus y to the third exponent, or to the third power, that is not x, plus, or x cubed plus y cubed. Remember, it's saying you have three of whatever's inside that parentheses. So if I have three of these doesn't equal this, it's going to say I have x plus y times x plus y times x plus y. Make that a better x. So it says I have three of them. And then in this instance, you can't just make it x to the third and y to the third, right? We're going to have to multiply those through or distribute. So we have to be careful about that. Now let's examine negative exponents. So negative exponents are useful when manipulating an algebraic statement. Memorizing the relationship is essential in being able to manipulate and complete future types of problems. We're going to be using negative exponents either to our advantage or we're going to get rid of them because we're just like, ah, it's not formal enough. But just know that this is a manipulation technique. We use it to manipulate. So for example, if I didn't want this to have a negative exponent, using this definition, this is a to the negative 1 over 1. If I bring it ever over that divisor, the exponent changes sign. So if this is over 1, if I wanted to bring that over the divisor, I'm going to get 1 over x to the seventh. So by bringing it over the divisor, the exponent went from negative to positive. Now if I wanted to bring this back top, that's going to be x to the negative seventh. So every single time it moves over the divisor, what's going to happen is the exponent goes from positive to negative. So in this instance, if I wanted to bring the x down there and the y back up there, that's going to give me y squared on top and an x to the cube on bottom. If I wanted to just leave this back on top, I would get y squared x to the negative third. Now it is informal to have a negative exponent, so generally speaking we want to make our final answer not have them, but it's not always the case that we always want to get rid of our negative exponents. Sometimes we want to make our exponent negative to use it. So just know that it's a tool. It's not like something that we need to use to finalize everything, but it's a tool that we use to manipulate our algebraic statements. So let's do a few more complicated problems here. And there's different ways to go about this. So on this one here, there's nothing to combine together on top. There's nothing to combine together on the bottom. So I could just be like, all right, I just want to, I still have the two on the top. I have the three on the bottom. Nothing seems reduced there. But four minus two 
right, what the x is, well, that gives me x squared. For the y's, negative 4 minus negative 3, well, that gives me a negative 1. For the z's, that's negative 3 minus 4, well, that's a negative 7. So I could bring these over the divisor, and I get y and 7 to the or at, uh, z to the seventh exponent. So I can say my final answer is 2x squared over 3y z to the seventh, right? Because I took this, moved it to the bottom, took this, moved it to the bottom. For this example, it might be easier to simplify this part first before we cube everything. Because then I have to cube every little detail there. And let's save that. So simplifying everything first, I have my 4. Okay, the m's, those subtract. So 4 minus 2, that's going to give me m squared. For the n's, 3 minus negative 2, well, that turns into a positive, so I get n to the 5th. And then for the p's, you get p, so 3 minus 4, which gives you negative 1. Well, I can take this, move that to the bottom, and I still have that 3 on the bottom. So I'm going to get 4m squared n to the 5th over 3p, all of that to the 3rd. So now I have to cube everything, and this is much easier. Remember, it says I have three of these. So I have three of the fours. I have three of the m squareds, so that means I have six of them. I have three of the n to the fifths, so it means I have 15 now. I have three of the threes, and I have three p's. And so this would be our result. So concluding today's lesson, we talked about the different properties of exponents, and there are a couple more, but those are just the primary ones that we just need to focus on. So what's the shortcut when we multiply exponents with the same base? When we multiply exponents with the same base, we have to add the exponents together. So it was x to the n times x to the m. So when we multiply these together, it's x to the n plus m. And then what can we do with negative exponents? Well, if we have a negative exponent, we can flip it over the divisor to make it positive. Now, every single time we see a negative exponent, just remember that it's a tool that we use. It doesn't mean that we necessarily automatically have to do it. But it's a tool that we use. So if I even had this, I, if I wanted to make it negative, I could move that over the divisor to then make it negative. So this does conclude our lesson. If you have any other questions, please leave them in the comments.